So here we have a basic program. Well, it's a basic program, not a basic program. So just to clarify, when I say it's a basic program, what I really mean is that it's a basic program. Okay, here's the basic idea. Sorry for that introduction. Welcome to my first video on using Quick Basic to create programs that you can run in DOS. To follow along, you will need DOSBox or a DOS computer if you have it, and Quick Basic. I'll put links to the downloads for those in the description. So today we're going to cover the following things. First, we're going to cover the screen command. The screen commands allows you to choose the resolution of your screen. Uh, and along with that goes the text resolution and the number of colors that you can use on your screen. So we have modes for different uh, adapters like VGA, EGA, and CGA. There's quite a few different modes that we can use. We're just going to choose one today and go over it. Then we're going to look at the clear screen command, which is the CLS command. Then we're going to look at how to write comments. And comments are simply things that are ignored by the compiler. So text in your code that's ignored by the compiler, it allows you to kind of label your code, describe it to other programmers, and keep a good record of what your code is doing so that you remember what your code does as well. You can see a comment on my screen right now that's the welcome message for this video. We're going to cover briefly variable assignment, but we're not going to go into detail. So we will use a single variable, but in the next video I'll go more over variables, variable assignment, and the loops and conditional statements. We're going to talk about the color command which allows you to choose the color of your text. We're going to talk about the locate command that allows you to choose the location of where you print your text. We're going to cover the print command which allows us to actually print to the screen. We're going to cover the end command which allows us to end our program whenever we would like, although your program will naturally end whenever it reaches the end of execution. Then I'm going to show you how to create a standalone executable file that can run from DOS on its own. Lastly, we'll just do a little bonus exercise. We'll create a small loop with a variable that allows text to print to the screen in different colors like it did in my introduction where the music was playing. Again, we're not going to cover variables and loops in detail. That's for a later video. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the screen command. I'm going to go ahead and delete this text here. That is a comment and I'm going to just start with the screen command. The screen command is simply written as screen and then a number. And the number associated with that is what screen mode you've chosen, which chooses your resolution and the number of colors you can use. So we're going to use screen 12. This is a high resolution screen mode for VGA. It allows 640 by 480 pixel resolution. And the text mode is around 30 characters vertically and 80 characters horizontally. It allows us to use 16 colors from 256 colors. So VGA mode is a, a super powerful mode for DOS. Uh, you may want to use lower resolution modes and lower color modes like CGA and EGA, and those would be uh, screen 1 through screen uh, 11 are all kind of a lower mode screen commands. But we're going to use screen 12 because that gives us a lot of characters and uh, high resolution. Obviously, modern computers are going to be able to run this just fine. The more advanced screen mode you choose, you know, the less uh, computers you're going to support from the past. So it's not going to be as backward compatible. But for our purposes, screen 12 is good. Now we're going to use the clear screen command. That's CLS. And all this does is just clear the screen so there's nothing on it. So anytime you want the screen cleared so you can kind of start over, that's when you would do this. I usually do this at the beginning of a program just to make sure the screen is cleared from the console when the program was actually run. Because if you run your executable file uh, and then text is displayed, it might be displayed along with the directories or the commands run in DOS and we don't want that to happen. So we clear the screen. All right. After the CLS command, I'm going to put a little comment that says clear the screen to say what this command does. Now, this is a pretty obvious command and you might not comment this, but I wanted to demonstrate how to use an a comment. You simply put the apostrophe 
and that's going to create a comment. So the CLS command will be executed, but the clear of the screen text will not. It will be ignored. So we can use comments anywhere we want to describe our code. So that's how comments work. All right, let's actually create a program that works and does something. We'll do the print command next. To do the print command, we just type print. And then I can type whatever I want. If I have a variable that I would like to print the value of, such as x, I could put the, that variable there. But uh, since we don't have any variables, I'm going to print a string literal. And I do that inside of quotes. And yes, I'm going to do it. Hello, world. Wow, that's <laughs> that's bad typing. OK, hello, world. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I, I just might as well. Notice that uh, basic is capitalizing all of my uh, commands for me, so it's very convenient. We have the print command, and I'm going to go ahead and run this so that we can see what it does. It's, this should print hello world to the screen. I can use the run command and choose start. As you can see, I can use F5 as well to run this. So that's what I'm going to do. And it prints hello world to the first text spot. That's actually printed at location 1, 1 in terms of text characters. Because we didn't define the location, it just starts printing from the top left. And it says press any key to continue, which will take me back to my code. So we printed hello world. Let's look at the color and location commands. So first, let's use color. So I'm going to type the color command followed by the number that's going to define that color. And we have 16 possible colors here. So let's use color 8. I actually don't know all the colors. I usually have to look at the color table. I used to not have to look at the color table, but now I do. You can simply Google these or whatever for the different screen modes in Quick Basic. But I've chosen color 8. Theoretically, this should change the color when we run this code. Let's look. It does to kind of a gray that we can't see. If we change it to another color, let's say 12, I'll run it again, and there we see kind of a red color. Notice my press any key to continue mirrors that color. Whatever the last color is, that's what it's going to mirror. So that's our color command. Let's say we want to change the location of this text. I can use the locate command to do that. So I simply type locate, and then I type the place where I'd like this text to be displayed, starting with the vertical and then horizontal locations. So let's say I want this to be about the middle of the screen. Well, since I have about a 30 by 80 text resolution, I should be able to type about 15 by 40, and that should be around the middle of the screen. Let's run it and see what happens. And there we go. Hello world is printed near the middle of the screen. OK, so we have a program that runs and it does a few different things. Now, let's say we want to print the value of a variable. First, let's assign a variable. So I'm going to go up above my print command here, and I'm going to say x equals 5. The keyboard doesn't seem to be working. So x equals 5 will put the value of 5 into the variable x. And now I can print that as well at the end of hello world if I would like. If I put a comma at the end of that, that is going to print x in a tabular way. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. And you can see it says, hello world, 5. So it's printing the value of x. So I've done basic assignment to a variable. And now I can use x anywhere I'd like. And it simply contains the value of 5 right now. We're going to cover variables in uh, much more detail later on in another video. So probably in the part two of this series. We're going to do a little bit of a bonus here. And I haven't covered the end command yet. I'm going to cover that uh, in the kind of the bonus code here. So what I'm going to do is actually just create a simple loop. I'll explain this in more detail in later videos. But I'm going to use my variable x. And I'm going to say for x equals 1, 2, 10. And then I'm going to say next x. Now, putting the x there is not required. I could just say next. And that next will automatically associate it with my for command and become the end of my loop here. But this is a loop that changes the value of x from 1 to 10 and will execute any code inside the loop each time uh, x is incremented. So what I'm actually going to do is simply take my code that says print hello world, and I'm going to move it into my loop. And then 
I'm going to leave X. And each time through this loop, my program is going to print hello world followed by the value of X. And X is going to increment from 1 to 10. So we should see print, print statements from 1 to 10. Let's see if it works. And there it does. Now notice it's printing over to the left. That's because if the text, the text continues to print, uh, it's going to kind of uh, come back over to the left side if it's, there's not enough characters to the other side of the screen. Okay, let's do one more thing to this. Let's make it a little bit prettier. By removing the locate command, this will simply print up at the top left. And then I'm going to add a color command here that will change the color of the print to actually the color of X. So the color will change 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's try it again. And you see that's how I got those different colors in my introduction. Now, let's say we want to end this program after X, after the loop is only executed one time. I could simply add the end command after my print statement and the entire loop won't execute. It will only execute one time. Let's try that out. And you can see Hello World is printed in the first color, which is blue. And the program ends. So those are the main things that I wanted to cover. We now know how to declare what our screen is in terms of resolution and colors, how to clear the screen, how to print to the screen, how to print the value of a string as well as a variable, how to change the color of that printed text, how to change the location of that printed text, and maybe, just maybe, how to write a basic loop. But we're going to do that in more detail in the next video. Before we go, there's only one more thing to do, and that's let's make this run in DOS. So I can create a standalone executable for this. So I use the Run menu, and I simply choose Make EXE File. This is asking me to save this, so I'm going to go ahead and save it with the name of Basic1. And now it allows me to create this executable file. I can change the name of it here, but I'll leave it at basic one. And what I want to do is, is make sure I select standalone exe file. Include all of the information in the executable file required by DOS for it to run. Now I can simply choose make exe and exit. And as you can see here, it's created the executable file. If I look at my directory, qb45 directory, I can see the basic one, exe, is there. I can move this to any directory I want, and it should still run. I hope you enjoyed this initial tutorial on Quick Basic. Tune in for the next one. Oh, hey, what did you say? Is this a computer virus written in Basic to make people unknowingly subscribe to my YouTube channel? Why would you even think that? What do you. I'm insulted.